Hello everyone, my name is JD from Studio 2105. Welcome back to Mixstream Online and another episode of Weekly Update Wednesdays. In this week's video, we're going to be exploring the topic of impedance and what it has got to do with choosing a pair of headphones. First off, a warm welcome to all the new viewers and a big shout out and thank you to all the patrons who help support the channel financially. If you're new to this channel, do head on down and click on the subscribe button. That would be very, very much appreciated. Uh, don't forget also to click on the notification bell so that you'll be updated every time I upload a new video. Uh, sign up for the uh, mailing list, head down to bit.ly slash mixstream online. Sign up for the email list and you get a bunch of free stuff okay um do consider as well if you want to help to support the channel financially by becoming a patron head down to the website www.patreon.com slash studio 2105 there'll be lots of special perks and benefits right so just head on down and check it out as well oh by the way okay um i am still running the vip patron offer so if you sign up okay um we're gonna have a couple of days left if you have until the end end of the month right end of february uh, so if you sign up become a direct access or a vip tier a vip patron i'm running a special offer i'll be giving away right a limited edition copy of my pop shop project ear sampler cd okay all right check it out i'm going to put this little graphic here all right uh, to find out more again just head on down to the patreon website okay it explains all of it in detail Airwaves on Fire are a Malaysian pop punk band, uh, which I had the privilege and the honor of uh, not only producing but recording and mixing as well here at Studio 2105. The band has just put out a brand new single titled Make Me Feel. It's available right on all major digital streaming platforms, so you can check it out. The music video is also out on YouTube. Right, just click on the uh, link up here and it will take you to the music video. Uh, we're in the process of recording their second EP right now. Go and follow the band, follow the band's social media. From time to time, I will also be posting updates on the progress of the uh, entire EP recording and production. So right, do stay tuned, follow either the band or follow my uh, social media on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, right, to be updated with news. Without further ado, let's head on down to this week's featured question. I'm planning on getting a pair of Bear Dynamic DT770 headphones, but don't know if I should get an 80 or 250 ohm model. Would a higher impedance model sound better? This is a great question and one of the most frequently asked ones all over the internet. Uh, I've been really meaning to get down to answering this question right for a long time already, but always some other kind of topic urgent uh, question kind of pops up. But anyway, let's get it down to it, okay? Whenever you are shopping for a pair of headphones or earphones or even let's say monitor speakers for, the, for that matter, you look to the specification chart. There are things such as uh, obviously things like frequency response, there is the maximum sound pressure level, and a very, very important specification is impedance, okay? This is one of the basic specifications specifications that right um, should be included it should be mentioned right in almost every quality pair of either headphones or earphones or and even loudspeakers right be it monitor or PA speakers um, guitar cabinets they will always mention right impedance so what is impedance impedance is the resistance right to the electric current transmitted from one device to another Basically, that's what it is. It is a form of resistance to the electrical current. In this case, we are talking about right the headphone outputs from, let's say, an audio interface into the headphone itself, or even, let's say, even a mixer or some other device, okay, that has got a headphone output. Impedance is measured in ohms, okay? Right, so the unit ohms. Very often, when it comes to headphones, this is in the range of between 8 to about 600 ohms okay these days 32 ohms around that value okay that's quite a common one among consumer headphones now every headphone will need some level of amplification most headphones that you see around what can be 
quite easily actually powered by you know the inbuilt amplifiers inside your smartphone or your digital audio player or any kind of a mobile device now however if you kind of start to go into the audio file or the professional world okay in the studio you will notice that the impedance on the headphones usually goes up now this is due to several reasons so um three reasons i can think of the top of my head would be firstly right it's the design of the voice coil right um another factor would be the magnet the type of magnet the, the strength of the magnet that's being used and number three also sometimes the impedance goes up because right the higher end headphones the professional headphones tend to use much more dedicated and specialized um, purpose design components lah. so generally speaking higher impedance headphones are designed for professional applications in the studio or on the stage so this higher impedance usually needs more power to drive the headphones right so a dedicated headphone amp is usually needed lah, right to deliver the higher audio levels a higher impedance design also usually will have more windings in its uh, voice call if we talk about headphones and this uh, can result in better overall sound better frequency response better clarity a little bit better detail and uh, even um, not only on the uh, high end but especially also on the bass response uh, okay is it a huge massive difference you know like a two or three times ten times difference um, compared to let's say cheaper headphones um, that that's obviously not okay right but generally speaking okay the high impedance uh, uh, designs right will have slightly better performance okay but high impedance headphones do have a drawback okay and one of it is that because of its higher power requirements uh, it may not work well with your smartphone or your mobile device okay so this is where the lower impedance headphones come into play these will require less power making it a lot more suitable for you know smartphones or other consumer devices lah. okay in the old days we had our old uh, uh walk bands if you can remember then we had our uh disc man cd players and uh, mp3 players uh, everything everything is on the smartphone uh, nowadays huh? back to these low impedance designs there is a, another drawback as well okay uh, all designs whether whether there's always pros and cons to each design with a lower impedance headphone you should not and you can't really use this with a powerful headphone ampli amplifier or a uh, high output source because as you can guess it right it will probably right damage the headphones okay right it will probably blow the uh, the, the headphones up all right now a good case that i that can illustrate this is with dj headphones or even sometimes um, um headphones that are used in uh, live sound applications right so in a loud environment such as a, a concert stage or a club you know um you need to use the right headphones you need to write the proper headphones that can handle the power being supplied to it you know either coming from a, a a dj mixer or you know a mixing console so if you use a low impedance headphone you take a 32 ohm headphones right very very easy to blow it in this kind of scenario okay so back to the question then so which impedance value should i use it all boils down to this term which is very important impedance matching as i mentioned earlier right a headphone needs the right amount of power to function um and one of the ways to sort of determine this is to match the impedance of the output source with the impedance of the headphones now when we talk about impedance matching it does not necessarily have to be equal right so it doesn't mean that the uh, output impedance from your headphone amp or your output source you need to match it exactly with the impedance on the headphones it's not necessary now without going into complicated mathematical formulas uh, this takes uh, takes me back to the uh, science classes back in the uh, back in high school now roughly the rough guideline is that your power source right meaning your headphone amp or output needs to be roughly 50 percent you need to have about 50 percent headroom more than the impedance of the headphone in question so when properly powered you know with enough headroom with the right impedance okay uh, a headphone right, will have enough juice to perform right to the best of its ability you know it will have the proper it can achieve the right dynamic range it can have the proper 
um, base uh, response and frequency response um, overall. Uh, this always definitely helps with the performance. So for instance, when you're dealing with tracks or material which has got a lot of bass, or maybe some, some program material or some music which has a wide dynamic range, such as classical music, okay? So if you have a headphone with a proper power amp, properly uh, matched impedance, right? You will be able to, um, you know, uh, get the most out of it, lah, okay, out of the headphones. Okay, now in your example, right, uh, we talk about the Bayer Dynamic DT770, right, um, Pro. Uh, I've got the DT990 over here, which is the, uh, it's just the, it's essentially the same except that this is the open back version, okay? So your DT770 Pro has got three variants, okay? So it comes in a 32 ohm, it also comes in an 80 ohm and a 250 ohm uh, model. So let's start with the 32 ohms, right? So 32 ohm variant can most likely be powered by either a smartphone, your MP3 player, or your PC or laptop, okay? Now, um, however, if you try the same thing, if you take an 80 or the 250 ohm uh, model instead, um, and you plug it into, let's say, a smartphone or, or a consumer device, you find that the level is going to be a lot lower, right? It's going to be low in level, or maybe in some situations as well, you're not going to get any signal at all. Why? Because the amplifier on these devices don't have the power to drive the headphones and the impedances don't match. So deciding which headphone to use, it all depends on your personal usage. So are you mainly using it for casual music listening on your smartphone or your digital player? Or are you using it for critical listening purposes? Um, such as you mixing or mastering and uh, you plan to, let's say, pair it with a uh, dedicated headphone amp or maybe a little bit of both, right? You know, you, you want to be a little bit flexible. You want a headphone which has a bit of flexibility for um, different, different scenarios, different situations. If it's the former, right, um, using it for casual listening, the 32 ohm model will best suit your needs, okay? Because you can use it for with any of your uh, smartphones or um, mobile devices and it will deliver more than enough power to drive the headphones. Now, if you are going to be primarily using it in the studio for mixing or mastering, then the 250 ohm variant would be the best choice. Now, with the third scenario, if you want a bit of flexibility, uh, this is where the 80 ohm model will kind of give you the most flexibility, right? Um, I wouldn't say it's the best of both worlds because it's kind of like in between. But you know, if you want a little bit of flexibility, the 80 ohm model, right, will do the job. When you plug it into a consumer device or you, when you listen to music on a smartphone, the volume level is not going to be so low that you can't hear the music, you can't enjoy the music properly. Neither is the uh, impedance too low enough that you can't right use it inside a professional studio environment. Like. So it's kind of a, a uh, a good compromise between the two situations. Now, personally, what I use here with the DT990, right, is I actually use the 250 ohm model. And um, honestly, I actually use this with my smartphones and uh, mobile devices as well. I, I do all my listening pretty much on this, actually, even uh, when it comes to video calls, video conferencing on my laptop and, and, and other devices. I use this for, for almost everything. Uh, I personally don't find any issue with it, with the uh, with the volume levels not being loud enough. Um, but maybe personally, that's me. That this your mileage may vary. Now, I of course, right, my habit is I never listen to music or you know I, I don't listen to music at extremely loud levels, right, uh, for extended periods of time. So I, because I need to take care of my hearing, right? Okay. So I personally have no issues with using uh, two hundred fifty ohms. Um, but again, your mileage may vary, okay? Again, as I mentioned earlier, all right, you have to, it depends on your personal and your individual use. Lah. I do suspect though, if let's say a 250 ohm um, model, if you're gonna be, let's say, you know, if you're going in on your daily commute, for example, right? You're, you're gonna be commuting in, let's say the subway, the MRT or public transport, and it's gonna be noisy, a noisy environment. Probably in that situation, 250 ohm is not gonna give, not going to give you enough level, right? Because of all the um, uh, noise, okay? Uh, you know, the, the ambient noise from the surrounding environment. 
Well, but you know, if you ever get into that sort of a situation, you should probably be right <laughs> investing in a pair of the noise cancelling headphones instead, lah. Okay, but that's a topic for another time. Okay, for another video. Now, in conclusion, do a bit of research before shopping for the type of headphone. Okay, uh, make sure it receives the right amount of power. It receives uh, a sufficient amount of power from its source. Um, be it from whatever device you're using, an audio interface, a headphone output, or if you have a dedicated headphone amp, um, and also make sure that you're right, it has the appropriate matching impedance as well. Understanding impedance and impedance matching will definitely play a crucial part in getting the best performance out of your headphones. Hope that helps. That brings us to the end of this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do leave your questions and your feedback down in the comments section. I really do love to hear from you. You can always hit me up on my social media as well. My Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, obviously right on this YouTube channel also, right? Do check out the rest of the videos that I have on the channel, okay? Right? Um, everything from tutorial videos, song breakdown videos, and also, right? Videos from the Direct Access 1.0 Music Production Workshop. Right, if you found the video useful and informative, do leave a like. It will really help with the YouTube algorithm. Do share this with your friends. And uh, remember, if you haven't done so, click on the subscribe button, right? And click on the notification bell as well, right? Uh, I am only a couple of subscribers more to go to hit that 1,000 subscriber mark, right? You guys have been an awesome uh, um, audience and awesome community. Thank you to all the subscribers and all the patrons as well for your support in this channel, right? All this while. You consider also becoming a patron once again at the website www.patreon.com slash studio2105. Till next time, right? Stay safe everyone, wash your hands, take care of your health and your personal hygiene, practice your social distancing. See you soon, right? In the next video. Happy recording and mixing. Peace, love, and music.